Winter 2017 brought a lot of water to northern Nevada, and there's more to come with the spring runoff. Now it's water that's much needed, but it's also water that needs to be managed safely. I'm Kim Smith with the Nevada Department of Transportation at the La Hontan Reservoir. The story grew during the month of January when we saw an incredible flow in the Carson River. And uh, during that period of time, a short period of time, we saw an increase in La Hontan of 60, 70,000 acre feet. As you look behind me, you see a reservoir that contains about 300,000 acre feet. And uh, when you see that kind of increase in a very short time, that send up all of, the, all of the flares. With Lahontan Reservoir on the rise, preparation to safely release water began. Below the Lahontan Dam is a diversion dam that divides into three sources that provide for water to be distributed throughout the valley. The Carson River Channel, the T-Line Canal, and the V-Line, which is the foremost carrying canal in the system. We're sending the water through the V-Line out a weir we have created, an emergency structure, put together in a very short time which allows the diversion of water from the V-line across open terrain, across the desert, off out into the southern part of the Lahontan Valley to the area of US 95, the highway. And it was at that point that uh, the Department of Transportation came to our aid and provided for massive oversized culverts. What we've done is uh, install a number of large culverts. We have Highway 95 South on the south end of town and then we have Highway 50 East. And the water has to get under those highways in order to get where it needs to go and, and prevent the flooding. We've had a great collaboration with the, all the state, local and federal government agencies here, as well as the uh, local citizens, the farmers and ranchers who use their own equipment to dig ditches and build berms. The governor came out and, and toured and saw the situation personally and, and NDOT has been really involved in this. Well, before the flows re arrived here from the Truckee Diversion Dam, there was only enough culverts to convey the flows that would arrive here from a natural storm event. So when you add an additional thousand CFS on top of that, you need a lot more conveyance. And it's kind of difficult to conceptualize a thousand CFS, but I tell people it's 450,000 gallons every minute. So it's just a tremendous amount of flow. So that was one of the large challenges was trying to figure out how to convey all that safely under the roadway. Water was making its way to the 95, and the team had 10 days to ready the roadway. Well, we really were up against the clock. Um, we had a situation out here where construction needed to happen immediately. Contractor worked fast and furiously along with NDOT personnel. The road was completed and the road was opened by March 15th, two days ahead of schedule. Friday eve of Easter weekend brought a threat of a road washout. I noticed along here where we installed some of the box culverts and where we had some existing culverts, how high the water was through here. I wasn't confident that night that the road would still be here in the morning. So we did emergency repairs. Like we were able to dump about 30 uh, yards of riprap into this particular washout basin to be able to prevent the road from eroding anymore. By Monday morning or Monday afternoon, the water actually started receding a little bit and we were able to see what we did that night definitely worked and, and kept 95 open through the weekend. The rate of the snow melt moving forward is a fluid situation. How fast Mother Nature knows, we don't. But it's something that NDOT maintenance and this District 2 in particular will continue to monitor. After a, a historic weather season, it's been a collaborative effort between federal government, state government, local government, and the communities to write the story of protecting uh, Fallon from the flooding as best we can. This is historic. It's epic what, w what we're witnessing today and what we've witnessed the last three months. And actually, I looked into the meteorological data going back actually 127 years when they started tracking it in 1888, and this is the largest water year we've had in that 127 years. So. I don't think we'll see anything like this for a long time again. I couldn't be more proud of our community in that connection, and the state of Nevada, and the support of our governor. Uh, we all came together in order to make this possible. 